All right. Good morning, everyone. Oh, happy New Year. Happy Tuesday. I'm still trying to just say the days of the week out loud so that I know what the day of the week is. <laughs> Definitely coming off of the island time where at least days of the week matter less. Um, I'm so happy to be back. I absolutely love this place. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys for being here. Would it be the same if one of you were missing? But hopefully you can experience that also for yourself that you know you're here for this practice because you've felt that it can implement a positive change or shift for yourself in your life. Just wanna remind you that it's very much a practice. You don't show up and have to perform to any degree or um, expectation. Usually that's all completely driven from ourselves, right? So one of the things that I wanna offer, morning Kim, um, is what, it's, what it is to like truly, truly trust ourselves. Um, and it kind of sounds like a silly question, but I feel as, especially in this practice, and a lot of you have practiced me for a long time, they call this an all levels or an all layers class. And we really show up quite different each day. So to trust ourselves, to trust our bodies and the awareness that we have, to know actually what we need, that we have to listen much more in tune to how we're doing. And someday, and that, that we are all under a cycle where that's going to be constantly changing for us. Some days will require more stillness. Some days we'll have more energy. It's always changing and that's really such a gift. We don't have to show up the same every day. And the more that we have this authentic relationship with trusting ourselves, as we go out into the world, people feel that from us. You don't have to really try or perform to expectations out in the world either. That starts to transform and really implement itself quite naturally um, off of our mats, the more that we have this deeper understanding of just asking ourselves how we're doing and how we're feeling. One of um, the little lines that someone just like passively said on my trip this past week, it's really, really stuck with me, is when we try to control, we choose not to trust. <laughs> it's like most of us are trying to control so, so much in our lives. And so when we give up a little bit, just like the tiniest bit of grasp that we have, that's usually really clenched fists that we have on a lot of aspects of our lives. And we start to loosen the reins and trust that life or God or universe, or even our own abilities to be in touch with those things and with ourselves can impact <laughs> um, our experience that everything changes because we're choosing to trust things again. We're choosing to trust us and we're choosing to trust life. It sounds like a much more easeful way to be <laughs> than to live here, right? We just all live here so much. So I was telling Jeff, it took a week of me just like not looking at a phone to rem just remember that. It's usually, we already know these things. It's just remem remembering um, for ourselves what we need. So the best, we should all do it. <laughs> Even if like we think we've done it, I feel like um, Sue just asked how did it feel a week without a phone, but I, I had it, um, but I didn't have any service or Wi-Fi for a solid seven days. And then having those few days like leading back into it felt really nice, but it gives you the opportunity to remember so much. I really like this idea too. I could just talk. This is what I learned. Sorry, Robert, we're not doing anything in our body today. <laughs> I'm just talking to you guys. No, we are. We're going to do things in our body. Um, but we're all like dismembered. In order to remember, it means that something's separate, right? And for most of us, that's the way that we're thinking our way through life and then the way that we're feeling, whether that's from our intuition or our hearts, that these places are dismembered. They're, they're acting like divorced parents. <laughs> And that's like, that's how, that's how I, I experience it a lot of times. It's like they have a relationship with each other, but there's a lot of boundaries and there's a lot of things kind of getting in the way of them actually coming together and working together. Um, that's a generalized, you know, idea, but um, we're going to start in a seated meditation. 
or show up in our bodies this um this I was gonna say this evening. This is where I'm actually at <laughs> this morning and see how we're doing. And then we'll move and breathe and connect to all of these things together. And just slowly shut your eyes down. If you're at home, you can find yourself propped up into a seat. If you're here and you want to sit up on a bolster, we have a moment here to really take up some space in this meditative seat. So find what works best for you and then just allow the seat to be easeful. Notice right away if the mind is active, without any judgment, just noticing those thoughts, allowing them to kind of draw more space to the back of the skull. Imagining a surface behind you that you could gently lean back into just to feel length and strength through your spine a lightness, but an expansive energy that moves across your heart. Softening of the shoulder, softening of your jaw. It's just a couple minutes of your day. So to allow these moments here to be focused on paying attention, finding awareness around your breath. Allowing your breath to be audible, be more expansive on the way in as an invitation. You could send inspiration through every cell in your body on your inhale. And exhale, allowing yourself to settle a little deeper into your sit bones, into your body this morning. Just acknowledging that it takes time to set ourselves up with awareness. Receive a deep breath in through your nose, fill up. Open mouth, audible exhale. Let's take this three times, falling out breath, inhale, belly, ribs, heart, hold. Exhale freely. Again, twice more, take up space, breathe in. Exhale audibly. Last one, deep belly breaths in. And out. With lips sealed, find a more rhythmic breath in and out through the nose.
And carrying your hands to your knees, palms face down, take some head circles, one ear to one shoulder and vice versa. Allow your chest or your shoulders, maybe even the ribs, move along with this motion. Perhaps we keep the eyes close. Let your gaze stay inward. I could care a little less about how this looks. If you want to spiral the chest in a circle one direction or the ribs in a circle one way. Notice how the hips respond to this movement, even seated. We come the other way. If you found a shape or a transition in one direction, I'll encourage you to take it to the next. Working towards symmetry. <clears throat> A couple of juicy shoulder rolls, pulling the shoulders towards your ears, melting them back down. Just waking up. So many details in our body to notice. And then when you're ready, you'll start to very gently carry yourself to a tabletop position on your mat. Your palms will ground underneath your shoulders, knees will come underneath your hips. And blankets are always there as an invitation to drop underneath your knees. If you need more protection underneath the knees, press evenly into your palms, curl your toes underneath you. If you're wearing socks like me, that could make it challenging. Maybe take them off. <laughs> Curling the toes underneath you, just press your heels back, stretch through the soles of your feet. Start to round like a cat. Spider through your fingers, draw the fingertips a little further in, round a little deeper. And take a couple breaths here. Rather than moving through cat and cow, just staying in cat for a moment. Breathing into the space behind your heart space in between your shoulder blades. Into the back line of your neck as you tuck your chin in. Draw your navel in and up, engage the core. Tailbone down. Replan into the palms, inhale, cow, we'll hold here as well. Press into the tops of the feet as you uncurl your toes, roll your shoulders back, lift your heart space forward. Maybe stretch your throat more actively as the chin lifts up. See if you can pinch now the shoulder blades towards one another, drawing the heart forward. Maybe a little wiggle in the hips. <clears throat> and now with your breath, inhale. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. <clears throat> Inhale, neutral table. Exhale, curl your toes underneath you. Lift your knees an inch away from the earth, tabletop plank. So the knees just barely hover away from your mat or blankets. Find that same curl of the toes under to press your heels back. We're stretching through the feet. Pressing into the palm, soft bend in your elbows, even if I can't see it. Power up through your shoulders. Lengthen through your low back. Breathe in. Gratitude, we don't have to stay there forever. Exhale, downward facing dog. Slow motion back to down dog. Pedal out your feet. Maybe let the head hang heavy in the windows of your shoulders. Really take up space here. Maybe walk the feet nice and wide, mat distance or even further than mat distance apart. Pulling the heels, the Achilles stretch down, soft bend the knees. Press into your palms, your thumb, your first finger a little more actively. Walk back through center, feet come in towards hips distance apart. Just notice the difference when we pre plant the feet. Gaze forward, think forward, breathe in. Exhale, travel to the top of your mat. Feet walk all the way forward. Ragdoll forward fold, hang heavy over your legs. Soft bend in the knees. Reach for elbows or just sway side to side.
Can you let your head hang a little heavier? Imagining a waterfall at the base of your spine that pours out through the crown of the head, soft or deep bend in your knees. Gentle sway or just a release of the spine over your legs. Breath guides you to depth. Release the elbows. Let's take a slow roll up to stand. Press into your feet, roll all the way up. Big shoulder roll at the top. Combo with Robert this morning. Suction cup your feet into the earth. Feel a small lift of the arches of your feet as you press down through your heels, balls of your feet. Just notice where you're standing, where you're meeting the ground. And then lift up energy through your legs, strong through your quads, soft bend the knees. Feel a small tuck of the tailbone down, the navel to lift in and up. Pull your fingertips towards the earth, lift your chest to the sky. Breathe in. And out. Slow sun A to start. Inhale, reach out and overhead. Maybe pray your hands or gaze up. We'll let your back body follow. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, long spine, long breath, palms to shins. Exhale, refold. Feel the ears on. Inhale, rise, root down through the feet, sweep the arms out and open. Exhale, prayer hands to chest. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen. This time, exhale, walk back, high plank, hands plant, feet step back. All layers class, if you'd like to drop the knees down, find a modified plank or stay on your toes. We're working towards the sensation, whether you're on knees or toes, as if a plank of wood would lower down to the earth. So find a nice strong spine, deep breath in. And then exhale, lower really slowly, knees, chest, chin, chaturanga. Elbows will shave your ribs on the way down. So strong through the triceps as you lower. Press into the tops of the feet. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, melt down. Inhale, press through palms and knees. Push up. Exhale, curl toes under. Lift up and back, downward facing dog. Three breaths in through your nose. Out through your nose. Just connecting to the breath. Inhale. Exhale. And. Soft bend the knees, gaze forward, inhale. Exhale, travel, top of your mat. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, forward fold. Add on a little at the top, inhale, rise. Root down, reach out and overhead. From here, exhale, cactus, bend your arms, open up your heart. See if you can draw elbows just to shoulder height. Spread your fingers wide, light up your biceps. And then from this strong cactus shape, lift your heart space forward up, tap tailbone down, protect your low back by engaging your core. Soft bend the knees, lift up through your chest and gaze, fill up, breathe. Notice your exhale roots you further into the earth. Feeling support from the ground beneath you. An invitation from the sky above you to stay open and lifted. And now reach to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, long spine, halfway lift. Exhale, walk back, hands plant, high plank. Your choice, knees or toes, deep breath in. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, lower down. Nice and slow, inhale, Cobra or Up Dog. Exhale, your way back to Down Dog. This can look a little different from mat to mat. Maybe we're taking Up Dogs with knees and thighs lifted from that push-up. Maybe you're just holding high plank and drawing back. Find your breath, Down Dog, fill up. Let go. Inhaling, 
exhaling. Take it again, inhale, gaze forward, think forward. Exhale, travel, light on your feet, however that looks, top of the mat. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, forward fold. All the way up to stand, inhale, rise. New shape at the top, prayer hands meet. Exhale, shark fin back bend, thumbs to the back of the head, elbows up high. Pause here, notice any change from this shape as the elbows come in and the chest lifts up. Finding gratitude, prayer hand behind us, mudra. Gratitude at the back of the skull for all things, all breath, all moments in time prior to this breath here now. To gift, nuance with each breath, each shape. Inhale, reach to the sky. Last time, exhale, forward fold, Usane. Your choice, following and trusting your breath as you inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take yourself back to downward facing dog. This can be through your high plank, maybe lowering halfway or all the way. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Come back to your breath if you lost it. Exhale back, downward facing. Three breaths. Heels lift, tippy toes, gaze forward. If you have a practice hopping, maybe you take a little hop or you tippy toe towards your hand, starting to feel that pressure into the palms, strength through your core to bring you all the way up. Nice, long spine, inhale. Exhale, refold. All the way up to stand, inhale. Urdhva Hastasana, prayer hand. Exhale, Samastitihi, palms to prayer at your chest. Sanskrit means standing at attention. So just plugging the thumbs into your heartbeat, relaxing the shoulders from your ears. Once again, suction cupping the feet into the earth. So the heartbeat behind your thumbs, take another breath. Honoring the simplicity of Sun A, saluting the day, moving the spine up and down, gaining strength. And inhale, reach forward and up. We're going to take some backstrokes like we're moving through a pool. So, like you're doing a backstroke in the pool, take right hand back and then let left hand come back as right comes forward. You can let your hips move, torso move here for a few rounds. Let this feel good. Find your breath. On an inhale, the right palm is going to lead back. Right hand is going to find your low back. Left palm will reach to the sky. Little baby back bend. With the right hand supporting your low back, press the hips forward, lift the left ribs up. You can come back to a twist, right hand back, left arm forward, inhale. Exhale, right arm comes up, left arm comes down. All fancy work. Press into your right foot, bend into your left knee, dancer pose, left hand grabs the inside of your left foot. Now I like to take my right hand to my right hip here. Just pause. We don't have to take an extreme version of this dancer. As the left foot is grabbed with left palm, as we root down through the right foot entirely as your stability, just a little quad stretch. This right hand feels really stabilizing to stay on the hip. You can keep it there. I mean, it's an all layers class. You can maybe lift the right palm up, maybe start to bend a little deeper or open up a little more into this dancer, keeping your hips square towards the top of your space. Deep 
breath in and out. Release your left foot, inhale, one leg Tadasana, the left knee will come forward, both hands reach to the sky. A little balance to start class, breathe in. On an exhale, we're gonna come all the way to an airplane lunge, so a slow motion. The fingertips are gonna float back, your left heel is gonna drive back, maybe you find more of a warrior three transition for a big challenge. And then drop the left foot down, left toes drop down, left heel stays lifted, inhale. Exhale, low lunge, drop the left knee, hands frame your foot. Whew. Quite an entrance. Right foot's grounded, right knee stacks on top of your right heel. I'm a big fan of blocks, most of you know, so if you need to take any transitions to get your blocks to the top corners of your mat, I talked too much at the beginning of class, so I didn't set you up, didn't set up camp for you. You can go ahead and grab them and then find your low right leg lunge. Left knee is grounded, right knee stacks over, right heel blocks are amazing tools to create more space. Just breathe here, opening, expanding through the heart space as if you've got a sense of cobra through the chest, length through the back of the neck. Notice the left hip flexor as it breathes forward. If you're ready, you can start to come out of this lunge slightly. We'll move forward and back from a half Hadamanasana. So as you flex your right toes and shift the right hip crease back, imagining a lasso on the right hip as it revolves the hips back. My hips are stacked over my left knee in this shape, right toes are flexed. Final little exhale to wave your chest down towards your right leg. I'm gonna kind of move dynamically here to start. So inhale, lengthen the spine in your half split. Exhale, refine your lunge. Inhale, half split. Exhale, fold down. There's subtle movements. Inhale, lift your heart. Long spine. Exhale, back towards the right knee, bending, lunge. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, half split. Flex the right toes. Lift the hips back. Exhale to fold. Hinge at the hips. Inhale, lift. Exhale, re-lunge. You can ditch blocks or keep them for support. Left palm grounds, right palm spins open, twist. Those circles felt good as we stood in Tadasana. Feel free to take the right arm on the move here, taking some big circles. Let me inviting all five fingers and the wrist to the party. Always say the jazzier, the hands. The more enlightened you are. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Dumb joke. <laughs> Jazz fingers help. Find your breath. Thanks. Thanks, Liz. I appreciate you being back laughing at my corny jokes. If you want, left, right palm reaches to the back of your space. Just pause. First layer is to extend right hand back. Soft bend in left elbow and spiral open from your rib cage. If you want the quad stretch, bend into your left knee. Reach for the top of your foot. Kick and pull. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. You've got the quad stretch slowly release. Right palm comes down, frame your foot. We're going to press so much into the earth that we extend the right foot all the way back to a one leg tabletop. Press into the palms, right heel lifts back, right toes start to steer down. Imagining a little weight on your right pinky toe that's shifting towards the earth, but then a balloon tied to the left right heel that's lifting the right heel just enough in height with the glute. To find strength through the right leg long as it extends behind you, breathe in. Like you're moving through honey, exhale knee to nose, right knee tucks in nice and slow, like you've taken that cat in your spine as you tuck in. 
Inhale, extend back. This time opening up the right toes towards the right. Exhale, right knee towards your right shoulder. Nice. Inhale, extend back. Start to pivot your weight into your left palm. You can draw your right toes down for more stability. Spin your left toes way off the mat and then open up right palm. So we're stacking our shoulders here, modified side plank. Rather than the right foot creeping way behind you, see if you can realign right heel with the same line of your left knee, whether that's grounded or lifted. So rather than your back right foot being way back behind you, yeah, restack. Awesome adjustments. Breathe in. Feel that stability, alignment, strong line from left heel of your hand to right middle finger. All is fine. Take another breath in. Exhale, right palm down, left toes come back, right toes stay lifted, inhale. Exhale, chaturanga, come all the way down, right heel can lift for a challenge. And then both knees drop. Inhale, bhujangasana. Exhale, lower. Little change here. Inhale, bhujangasana, chest lifts. Find a half cactus arm with your right arm. If you'd like less, then you'll tee out your arm. If you want more, the more the right fingertips are reaching towards the top of your space, the more you're gonna feel as you place the right palm down, roll onto your right hip and press into your left arm as if it's a push-up arm to stack your hips and to start to open up the space between right shoulder and the right side of your chest. It's called a healing wing stretch. So Jeff, you'll feel much more if this arm is teed out. Yeah, yeah, working towards the space between shoulder and chest. Nice adjustment, Robert. That looks much more comfortable, easeful. Same thing here, Mama. If you have your this hand coming out like a T rather than in front of you, you're feeling this, yeah, specifically with shoulder and chest knee. Nice. That feel okay? We can relax this toe down. Whew. Bend this knee even to drop the foot down yeah just so the foot doesn't have to float beautiful more restorative that left toe can creep back if you want a little more the left palm can press into the earth but breathe here and be here for a few more rounds Very slowly, we'll start to come back the way we came in. Right palm comes in to frame your chest, slow motion. Press into the tops of your feet, really connect all 10 toenails into the mat. Let just the upper body lift you, inhale, cobra. Exhale, melt down. Notice small changes from right to left. Inhale, cobra. We'll take that to the other side, cactus or T out the arms. So the arms coming out to the left rather than in front. And then we roll onto left hip, drop the side of your left part of your skull down, left head down. And then really thinking about this space where shoulder meets the chest and we're opening up area that's often quite closed off, whether we type or we drive cars or we eat food <laughs> we text there's so much design for us to rotate the opposite direction so see if you can just breathe life into this space requesting more room can we make it a little softer subtle you don't have to create strain or stress in this area Right knee can be gently bent, right toes can travel back, or right palm can press down for more. Good. 
And so if the head is floating or we're straining the neck, drop the left head down. Let's Slow and mindful, we'll roll ourselves back to our bellies. Press both palms to frame the chest. One more cobra through center, just honor, finding symmetry. Exhale, drop down. Press through palms and knees, inhale, modified high plank or maybe high plank for a challenge. Nice, exhale back, downward facing. Notice changes in down dog after finding that chest stretch. <sighs> Is forward, think forward, inhale. Exhale, travel top of your mat. Inhale, long spine, long breath. Exhale, forward fold. Up to stand, inhale, root down through the feet, reach up through the fingers. Our left arm will start our motion at the top of this flow. Big stretch back, like your back stroking in a pool. Right arm follows. Maybe we already have a little more space through this movement after holding our healing wing stretch. Feel a little theme throughout class to open up the space. Next time the left arm comes back, we'll pause in that twist. Left hand comes to your low back, right arm reaches to the ceiling. Little mini water wheel variation in Tadasana, extending the right ribs to the sky, right armpit open. Little baby back bend with the support of your left hand squaring off your hips. <sighs> Another breath in, and then exhale, come back to your twist, nice and slow with strong arms. The right arm will come down, left arm will come up. We'll square off first, plant into your left foot, and then bend in your right knee for dancer pose. Right foot is caught with the right palm. This is the shape with the quad stretch with the roots growing from left heel down, your heart lifting forward and up. Maybe you have something deeper here. You drew the palm to your hip to square off and to stabilize first. Your options, maybe kicking and pulling in your dancer. Just knowing this balance is temporary, but we root down, we focus, find awareness on a point or a drishti in front of you to help. Find your breath here rather than holding the breath in balance, engage and use the breath for more space. The slow motion come from this dancer pose to a Tadasana, let go of the foot first. Let your right knee drive up like you're walking up a flight of stairs, right hand reaches left, Tadasana. Then exhale all the way back to an airplane lunge. You can take this slow for a challenge or just extend the right foot back Ball of your right foot will drop, hands reach back, heart reaches forward. Find a solid breath in, you're landing. Exhale, low lunge, right knee drops, hands ground. Wiggle yourself first into your lunge, left foot down, left knee stacks over your heel. Hands on blocks for support. We'll just hold here for a moment in our cobra lunge.
Take another breath in and out. And then we'll start to lift or shift rather the hips towards the back of your space. The left toes will flex. Hands can slide back slightly onto the blocks. Whoo-wee. Larry's feeling different today for me. Just on her asymmetry in your body. Left toes flex, breathe into a long spine. Exhale, wave down with the exhalation, hinging at the hips. It's just a really subtle movement here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, re-bend in the left knee. Come to your lunge briefly. Take the breath, inhale, half padamanasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lunge. Let's do that one more time, that full round dynamic movement. Inhale, half split. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, refine your lunge. Blocks can shift forward. Right hand can ground down. Left palm spins open, twisted lunge. Maybe we take those big circles with the left arm, back down, forward, up. Soft bend in the right elbow, even if I can't see it. Allowing the spin twist to come from your abdomen. Next time you extend to the back of your space, pause. The left hand can stay actively reaching back. You can just hold here, or you can bend in the right knee, reach for the top of your right foot, kick and pull. Quad stretch option number two. Notice if we've hyperextended through the right elbow, soft bend, lighten the pressure, and take this once again from the ribs, left shoulder reaching to the sky. Another full round. Release the foot, slow motion, inhale to the twist. Exhale to your lunge. Press into your palms evenly to find this kick back. We'll engage the core. Lift the left heel to the back of your space. One leg, tabletop. Left toes take that same steering down. So as the left pinky toe drives towards the earth, the left inner thigh lifts up to the sky slightly to level off your hips. If you want the challenge, you engage the left heel a little higher in line with left glute. Deep breaths in. Exhale, knee to nose. So much strength comes with slowness. As you inhale, extend back. Open the left toes out. Exhale, left knee, left shoulder. Inhale, extend back. Pause. Start to spin your right toes off your mat. The left toes can drop down for the modified side plank variation. Root down through your right hand, open up through your left. Once again, just notice if the left foot came way back. See if we can find more of an alignment of hips stacked over right knee. Right heel is the base for your left arm to channel out to the sky, one big long line. And then maybe the left heel lifts. So a half moon variation or side plank modified where we are, lift, open through the collarbone. If you kept the foot floating last time, we'll start to return the left hand down, swivel the right foot back. Want the challenge, left toes stay lifted, inhale. Exhale, chaturanga, shave the ribs with your elbows, come all the way down. Then drop the left foot to meet right, inhale, cobra. Exhale, down. This time, press into your palms, spider fingers off the edges of your mat. So spider fingers will come way out, draw the elbows up and then lift your chest forward and up. Little variation. We want the palms wide enough so that when we exhale, left shoulder down, right shoulder stays lifted. We gaze over the right shoulder. The hands are really close to the body. We're not finding as much space. So take the hands off your mat. 
if the hands are fully off the mat and towards the top corners of your mat, off to the edges. Yeah, we have more space to lift. Spontaneous Cobra, exhale lower. Nice, come through center. Take that to the other side. We drop the right shoulder, gaze over left. Inhale, center. Exhale, lower everything down. Replant the palms now to frame the chest. Inhale, cobra, and pause. Just see if you can keep the chest lifted, allowing all this openness that we're carrying through the heart space. Release the shoulders down, lighten the pressure in your palms, and press more into the tops of the feet. Challenge here to maybe float the hands back like we did in our transition back to a airplane lunge. So the hands float back, become long through the back of your neck. Deep breath in, back body strong to lift your heart. Exhale, hands frame your chest. Press into the palms, press into your knees, inhale, push up. Exhale, child's pose. Knees wide, head down, hips to heels. Just how this child's pose feels. Just integrate all this expansion, this movement thus far into the body here and now with your breath present. From your child's pose, we'll come up to a rock pose seated. At home, if you have anything like a strap, maybe a bathrobe belt is very similar because it's floppy and long. Um, we're going to take that strap and just place it to the top of our mats. It will be most useful there. Specifically, you can have it at that top, middle, or corner area. Press into the palms. When you're ready, downward facing dog. We'll start to find some new shapes in our body. A little challenge some standing postures with all this expansion that we've created in our hearts. The right leg, we'll take them three leg dog as you inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale, open bend and stretch. Right knee bends, maybe bend and straighten the right leg a couple times, like a wave. Ankle circles. Close off your right shoulder slightly, even pressure through the palms, head is hanging heavy through the shoulders. And then inhale, lengthen, level hips like you did in your tabletop. Exhale, we'll drive right knee to your nose, take this nice and slow, and then we'll stamp it in between your thumbs. For warrior two, spin your back foot down. Inhale, cartwheel the left palm open. Exhale, warrior two. And just draw your hands to your hips for a moment. We'll have some time with our arms out long. So straighten through the right leg. Just notice your pelvic floor here. Notice if we're overextending the pelvis open to the right. See if you can find neutrality in the pelvis. So just notice what happens if you actually shift the pelvis here in warrior two to be more naturally lifted from pelvic floor up, Uddiyana Bandha, but my right hip, we kind of sit back into the weight of our left hip, then rebend and steer open through your left ribs. So we now found some neutrality through the pelvic floor. We're gonna reach down for our strap. Open the strap nice and long. Doesn't really matter if the buckle's in your way. And then we're gonna pull on this strap, forward and back. I like to take this right behind the head. For a little more expansion. Imagine if you're any Sam Jones or Sam used to say, it's like you're holding a um, piece of bamboo. So we're pulling. We never do this with a strap. We just imagine it, but the strap makes it harder. So pressing, pushing you guys today. As you pull the right hand forward, pull the left hand back, we just automatically feel lifted here. We might not have as much mobility in these next movements that we're used to with the strap, but we're gonna feel a lot of engagement in our side bodies. So with this pull, breathe in. Exhale, extended side angle, but keep the arms nice and long. Nice, inhale, reverse warrior. 
exhale, extended side. We're just moving forward and back. With this pull, inhale, reverse. Thank God we don't have to do this forever. We'll take it one more round. Third time's the charm. Nice, inhale back. Ditch your strap, Whew. just throw it out. Lengthen your right leg. Take a half bind with your left arm. Take your right arm, right palm rather to the back of your heart. If you have a deeper bind here, feel free to take it. Just notice with the right leg straight, taking and alleviating some of the tension out of our lunge, lifting up to your right ribs. Inhale. Exhale, release the bind, warrior two. Cartwheel everything down, breathe in. Drop your back knee down, exhale. Back at our lunge, inhale, cobra lunge, maybe with blocks, maybe spider finger. Exhale, hips back, half splits. Flex the toes, breathe in, long spine. Just once, exhale, wave down. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, find your lunge. Left palm plants. Inhale, right arm opens, twist. Exhale, right arm reaches back. Either quad stretch or just a reach. Full round of breath in this twist. Fill up. Exhale. Inhale, foot releases. Exhale to your lunge. Inhale, one leg tabletop, right heel kicks back. All this is familiar. Just moving with our breath. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, right knee, right shoulder. Inhale, extend. Pivot on your left knee. Open up your right palm. Mini Harushadrasana, half moon. This time with an option for Chopasana, bend the right knee, kick and pull here. We have much more expansion now through the collarbone, through this space where shoulder and chest connect. Can you kick into your palm as you pull on your foot? Foot is released, inhale. Exhale, right palm down, swivel the left toes, right knee meets left, knees, chest, chin, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, your journey back, downward facing dog. Deep breaths in. Deep breaths out. Drop your knees, rock pose, hips to heels. Take that strap. Carry it, whether you want to or not. If that pissed you off, you're probably doing it right. Top of your mat. And then just take some alleviation in your wrists here. So finding, once again, really jazzy, enlightened fingers. Take it around one direction. And then switch directions. Also ignore these spaces or wrists or fingers, small details of the body. Hmm. We're ready, take the hand, shake them out. Imagining you've got little water droplets on the tip of the fingers, maybe come up all the way, come out. Find your breath, inhale up, exhale out. And then find your way to downward facing dog. This could be through some cat and cow, maybe another connecting vinyasa, anything that feels good, back, down dog. We'll take these standing postures, second side. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, open, bend, and stretch. Find similar stretches on this side that you did first side. Inhale, lengthen, level hips. Find that same squareness and strength from your tabletop. Exhale, slowly knee to nose, connect, engage. Press the left foot down, spin your back foot down. Inhale, rise up, 
warrior two. And then take your hands to your hips, lengthen your left leg. I feel like I did a weird explanation of this last time, but sometimes we hyper open the hips to the long edge of our mat. I'm encouraging you to allow the hips to just naturally kind of pivot forward. Yeah, or slightly at that diagonal and then re-bend in the knee for the warrior two, creating a lot less tension and pressure for our low spine. Knife edge of your right foot is really sealed down. Nice. From here, we inhale and lift the hands from the hips. Exhale, reach down for your strap. Find that nice long strap extending front and back. First starting at the chest, then swivel it behind the head to keep that expansion. The more we pull, the more we get out of it here. Deep breath in. Exhale, extended side angle. We're just moving with the breath here, keeping the arms long. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, extend. Awesome at home. Thank you for sharing your screens with me. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extend. Next time we reverse, we'll pause. Lengthen the left leg, ditch the strap. Right arm takes the half bind, left palm comes to the back of your heart. So the left leg has straightened to alleviate some pressure from our lunge, left elbow is lifting, right arm is bound, maybe the palms come closer together towards touching, but that's not the goal. Goal is to feel sensation. Whew, man. <laughs> Oh, it always gets me with life. I think the goal of our life is to look a certain way, to reach a certain shape. Usually when we get there, we realize maybe we didn't feel how it felt to get there along the way. <laughs> Just notice here, one more lift. And then exhale, unbind, come all the way to your warrior two. Inhale, cartwheel down. Exhale, drop your right knee. We'll find that little flow. Spider fingers or blocks are useful. Inhale, cobra lunge. Exhale, modified half split. Breathe in, lengthen. Exhale, wave down. Inhale, wave up. Exhale, lunge. Right palm plants, inhale, twisted lunge, left arm lifts. Exhale, reach to the back of your space, either quad stretch or just a reach, full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lunge, left palm plants. For that big donkey kick, power kick, left heel comes back, inhale, one leg tabletop. Exhale, strong core, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, left knee, left shoulder. Inhale, extend. Swivel right toes off your mat. Exhale, mini half moon. Left palm extends to the sky. Left heel is lifted. Left toes are flexed. You can stay. This is a strong grounded shape on the right knee or bend the left knee, kick and pull. Your choice here in Chopasana, invitation to breathe space into our left shoulder, left chest are connecting. To the left quad. Quad stretch release, inhale. Exhale back to your tabletop, left palm grounds, left knee grounds, find your connecting vinyasa lower if you wish. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, back to a child's pose. Press into palms and knees. Child's pose back. Forehead rests down once again, using the shape as an opportunity, invitation to integrate all of that movement.
from child's pose back to rock pose. I'm gonna set ourselves up. I'm gonna show you guys a couple options for our last shapes. They're all grounded, but they're still kind of peak shapes that we've been opening up to as far as an option for half bow. And then at the end, I'll give you an option for a full bow. I really, really like the variation of being able to have a bolster at the top of your mat. So I'm going to show you before you guys all start to come into it. The first thing we'll do will be similar to our flow when we came to half wing. So when we're on our bellies here and we're coming to that half wing, I'm going to offer that top leg to take a bend and we're going to come back in, keeping the knee bent. I'm going to reach for the top of the foot, kind of like a dancer, but on my belly and then extend my front foot forward, front hand forward, kick and pull. This is a half bow option. And then we'll take that to the other side. When we get to the point where we might find a full bow, lifting the chest, taking the arms back to our airplane arms as we did earlier in class, reach for the tops of the feet, kick and pull. I really like to press myself up first, take the bolster for more of a lift and engage the ribs right on top of the bolster. So I'm really settled in and the bolster's automatically supporting me to be lifted here. And then all of a sudden this reach back and extension is much more doable with that support underneath the ribs. It's not underneath my belly, it's underneath the ribs. If I'm up really high, then I'm just kind of collapsing in the low back here. So if I'm back far enough to where the tops of my ribs, your lady bottom of the bra strap pretty much, is what's hitting that lip of the bolster and then press into feet and palms. That's that option at the very end. If you've got a full bow in your practice without it, you're more than welcome to take it. But we're gonna start with that half wing, just a moment or two for each side, holding one foot at a time. So when you're ready, bolsters can come to the top of your mat if you wanna set yourself up, set up camp and giving yourself clear space so that we can wing out one arm at a time. And then I promise we'll come to our backs, but I guarantee whatever you do for the rest of the day, we sit, we sit differently, we stand differently, walk differently um, with all this expansion through the heart. So palms down, come all the way to your bellies. Lighten the palms, inhale, cobra. Exhale, right palm comes out, either teed or cactus, press into the left palm. And then the left knee has the option to bend here. The right side of the head is down. Let's take a full round of breath. Now left palm that's grounded in that push up is gonna come back and start to reach for a bend in that or with the bend in your left knee, reach for the top of the left foot. So we square off the hips starting here like a dancer. If the left knee is open, make sure we square off first and then start to roll onto your hips keeping the pressure of foot in the palm, palm pulling on foot, extend your right fingertips forward, half bow, Whew. right fingertips now reaching to the top of your space, hips reground on the earth. Nice, Sue, beautiful, breathe in. When you're ready, release the foot, come out. Whew. Palms underneath your shoulders, cobra, inhale. Little reset, exhale, almost there. Inhale, extend, left arm comes out to your T or cactus, roll onto the left hip. Right knee bends behind you. And we start to think about the right arm coming back, right palm reaching for top of right foot. This is a big shape. From here, we gently, softly start to roll back with core control to our hips. And then extend the left fingertips forward. Press into the foot and palm, kick and pull. Reach, reach, reach. We exhale, release the foot. Find a crocodile variation so palms create a pillow. Rest your left cheek on the pillow and then windshield wiper your legs side to side. Maybe draw some circles with your toes on the ceiling. Come through center, switch cheeks, right cheek comes down, finding symmetry in the neck. Keep the circles or figure eight motions, 
really invent with your toes to the sky, like you're making a little painting to create more space in the low back and hips. Now, if you want to come through center, press palms to chest and press into knees. Inhale, modified high plank. Exhale, back to a rock pose. Just enough to set yourself up with that bolster. Bolster comes down. We have nice square bolsters in this space. So the lip of this bolster is what's going to come right to the top of the rib cage here. And take my palms nice and wide. Inhale, lower the ribs down, lift the heart. Maybe the hands come out like a teepee, spider fingers, and this is enough. Maybe it's one foot at a time, like we were just doing. Right hand to right foot. Right hand can come out. If you've got both, take them in. Where can we send the breath? Breath is so key to creating more space in this shape. So your own pace, your own time. Be gentle as you let go of the feet, as you come back to your hands on top of the bolster. We'll all press into our bolster. Shift the hips back, send your bolster now so that it's long ways on the mat. Inside corners come to the inside of your thighs and then we just rest down, left cheek down first. Left arm, this should be really supportive. So the knees are nice and wide for child's pose. We let the hips come to our heels, hips all the way back to the heels. Yeah, and drag the bolster back. So that is essentially just a juicy pillow in this shape for you to fall down onto. Left cheek down first, a few breaths. Almost there, team. Lots of hard work today. Thanks for sticking with me. Right cheek down, just switch cheeks, stay in the shape, stay soft. Slowly draw your palms back, lift yourself up just enough to swivel onto a seat. You can now carry that bolster at the top of the mat for Shavasana in a moment. Drag any blankets to the side. Scoot your hips to your heels. Maybe draw the knees or thighs first on the bolster. Scoot yourself up as you need and then roll back. And then draw the knees in. So bolsters placed for Shavasana in a moment, but give yourself a big hug. Take some circles one way and then the other. On the shape, I want to offer any last position that feels like it's calling you before we come to Shavasana all together, really leaning back into this sense of trust for what you need here and now. This could be just continuing to hug the knees in, maybe legs up the wall, shooting your feet to the sky. Happy baby, drawing the knife edges of your feet into your hands, pulling your knees wide. Maybe it's a gentle twist side to side. Next moments are yours to really be in your body.
We have been already coming out of this final shape to bring you into a resting pose for Shavasana. Shavasana is just an opportunity to be in our bodies to rest. If we can agree to be here. Again, just a few moments of your day. Let your arms lay by your sides rather than teed or above the head at this point in class, just giving yourself full rest, relaxation to move from the crown of the head through the chest, through the abdomen, belly is soft. Palms can gently lay open as a gesture to receive. Maybe this gesture is also an agreement to receive sense of trust with ourselves with life source all things that are not in our control thank god we don't have to turn on our heartbeats each morning we don't have to control the sun going up and down that's a gift
receive a deep breath in. Exhale audibly. Rumi shares that there is a voice that doesn't use words to listen. You know, to add that we can entrust this voice, this source sense. As we bring life into the body through deeper breaths, filling up the lungs with gratitude for what you have, with who you are. Get to add some life movement into your fingertips, your toes, and your face. Maybe you gently rock the head side to side or bring yourself in your own unique time and way towards the seat. But know if you're feeling perfect as you are in Shavasana and you'd like to stay for a few more moments, it's entirely up to you. You're more than welcome to stay. We'll arrive at a seat, shoulders laid back, palms. Lay open on the knees once again. It's just a small invitation for the chest to be open. Heart is open. Spine is strong. Deep breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Inhale, reach up and overhead, palms to prayer. Exhale, prayer hands to the midline. Thumbs connect to heart one last time. Head to fingertips. Be kind to yourselves because you matter. Be kind to others because they matter. Heart in you chooses to love each and every one of you. Om Shavaya. Namaste. Thank you all so, so much for being here. Thanks for kicking off New Year with me in this class. Let me know if you have any questions. Always good to see each of you at home too. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys need anything. Otherwise, have a happy Tuesday. And I will see you hopefully next week. Thank you. And sorry, Zoom, I realized like halfway through class, Kathy, I didn't give you guys music. <laughs> um, so sorry about that. <laughs> I know you love jams. So if you wanted that playlist, it's called, it's actually a 90 minute playlist on my Spotify, Kathy, but it's called Trust. 90 minute Sangha Trust. Yeah. Right. You what? Oh. I didn't know what you just said to me. All of that just went into a giant blur bike. <laughs> yeah, <I didn't. laughs>